The Manipulated Man. Published on March 14, 2016, by Carl Donk. During the past weekend, I came across an interesting book by Esther Villa, titled The Manipulated Man. If you haven't read it yet, I recommend reading it, as there's a lot of truth in the book. In fact, I recommend reading this book before you decide to get married or commit yourself in any kind of exclusive relationship with the opposite sex. In her book, Villa explains that men are being manipulated into becoming slaves for most of their lives, and her observations in that regard are spot on. However, Villa blames everything on women, and this is where she's wrong. In fact, this is a big contradiction throughout her book that she completely overlooked. She correctly observes that men and women have the same intellectual potential, but that women don't go on to develop their intellectual potential in life while men do, which has mostly been true for thousands of years, and up to present time, although it's beginning to change. Here's a quote from her book. Quote, At birth, men and women have the same intellectual potential. There is no primary difference in intelligence between the sexes. It is also a fact that potential left to stagnate will atrophy. Women do not use their mental capacity. They deliberately let it disintegrate. After a few years of sporadic training, they revert to a state of irreversible mental torpor. Why do women not make use of their intellectual potential? For the simple reason that they do not need to. It is not essential for their survival. Theoretically, it is possible for a beautiful woman to have less intelligence than a chimpanzee and still be considered an acceptable member of society. By the age of 12 at the latest, most women have decided to become prostitutes. Or, to put it another way, they have planned a future for themselves which consists of choosing a man and letting him do all the work. In return for his support, they are prepared to let him make use of their vagina at certain given intervals. The minute a woman has made this decision she ceases to develop her mind. She may, of course, go on to obtain various degrees and diplomas. These increase her market value in the eyes of men, for men believe that a woman who can recite things by heart must also know and understand them. But any real possibility of communication between the sexes ceases at this point. Their paths are divided forever. End quote. She then goes on to argue, on the one hand, that women are very unintelligent and stupid and love to keep themselves that way, while on the other hand, she credits women with putting a very elaborate plan in place for the enslavement of men, while also managing to keep the deception of these vastly more intelligent men, as she also points out, going on for a very long time. This doesn't make sense, and in fact my research has shown that the source of these problems and manipulations between men and women has to be sought outside of the human race. As I point out in my post Sexual Suppression and Repression 1, Definition and Origin, there's a lot of evidence pointing to the fact that humankind was enslaved by an outside force, using tactics of divide and conquer applied at the fundamental level of the sexes. By dividing the human race at the level of the sexes, by creating constant opposition and conflicts between men and women playing men and women out against each other, they were able to conquer and enslave the entire race. In this regard, Villa does correctly observe that any real possibility of communication between the sexes ceases at this point. Their paths are divided forever. So not only are women not the root cause of men being manipulated in society, but women were the primary attack vector that was used to enslave humankind as I explain in great detail in the aforementioned posts. It's very, very important to realize and understand this. And while it's true that women have historically not spent a great deal of time developing their intellectual potential, Villa apparently failed to realize that this is largely to blame on society, especially the social conditioning that women received starting from very early childhood that killed their curiosity and ambition. In fact, as I discuss with a lot of evidence in my post on marriage, throughout history it's mostly been women who were being enslaved by men. In addition to Villa's remarks that men and women have the same intellectual potential, I would also like to point out that men 
and women also have a similar sex drive by nature, or the same sexual potential. I discuss this in more details in the fourth and fifth part of my Understanding Women series. Like I mentioned there, the differences we see today between the male and female sex drives are the result of social conditioning, especially the social brainwash, which is targeted at women starting from very early childhood and conditions them to suppress and even repress their sexuality. Villa also admits this in her book. Quote, By the age of five, any girl will have been persuaded that she wants to get married and have a home and children, and when girls are 10, 15, or 20, they still want the same things. By the age of 12 at the latest, most women have decided to become prostitutes. End quote. As I've shown in the first part of my series on understanding women, female sexual suppression and repression cause women to interpret their natural desire for sexual satisfaction in a completely different and misleading way. That sexual energy is often harnessed to drive the consumerism in our current societies around the world. Like I mentioned, quote, Did you ever wonder what's up with women's seemingly insatiable desire for clothes, shoes, jewelry, and related items? It's like they can never have enough of those. By now you probably already have a pretty good idea why this is the case. But in case you don't, here's the answer. They are simply compensating for their chronic lack of sexual satisfaction. Because it's very difficult for them to satisfy their sexual desires, they try to compensate for it by focusing their attention on other things that make them feel better about themselves in order to get some kind of feeling as if they're getting the satisfaction they need. But this never works for the long term because the root problem keeps existing, namely, their repressed sexual desires keep longing for satisfaction. So women find themselves in a situation of perpetual discontent. So by the time they get the new shoes they've been longing for, they are already looking to get the next pair. End quote. And Villa agrees. Quote. A woman will certainly feel happy when she has an orgasm, but it is not the most intense pleasure she knows. A cocktail party or buying a new pair of aubergine-colored patent leather boots rates far higher. End quote. Female sexual suppression and repression are also the root cause of women's irrationality, and they're often difficult and unpredictable behavior. This is also something that Villa admits in her book. Quote, the most important requirements for woman's divinity are, however, her propensity to masquerade and her stupidity. A system must either overwhelm its believers with its greatly superior wisdom or confuse them with its incomprehensibility. As the first possibility is unavailable to women, they take advantage of the second. Their masquerade causes them to appear strange and mysterious to men, their stupidity makes them inaccessible to scrutiny. While intelligence shows itself in actions that are reasonable and logical, hence permits measurement, predictability, and control, stupidity shows itself in actions that are completely unreasonable, unpredictable, and uncontrollable. Women are protected by a screen of pomp, mummery, and mystification as much as any pope or dictator, they cannot be unmasked and will increase their power unhindered, gaining strength as they go. In return man is guaranteed, in the long term, a divinity in which he can deeply believe. Women, however, can lie with a clear conscience. They are not involved in the process of work, so their lies will harm only one person, usually the husband. And, if it is not discovered, it is not a lie at all, it is feminine guile. End quote. Anyone who has read my article series on understanding women should be able to understand women and explain their irrational behavior, and in fact, should even be able to predict their irrational behavior to a very great extent. Yes, there was a time when women seemed strange and mysterious to men and even to themselves, most women don't even understand themselves, but that time is quickly coming to an end now. And the reason why women can lie with a clear conscience, as Villa correctly points out, is because they've been trained to do this from very early childhood. In fact, they've been trained to lie even to themselves when it comes to one of their basic and most important human needs, 
sexual satisfaction. Watch the below video for evidence. Lying and irrationality have become second nature to women out of pure necessity necessary to getting accepted in society in order to survive. It's mind-boggling to witness the extent at which women can convincingly and frequently lie to others and even to themselves. Women have essentially been turned into some of the worst psychopaths in society, even resorting to emotional manipulation to back their lies. And Villa certainly agrees. Quote, What an advantage a man would have if only he realized the cold, clear thoughts running through a woman's head while her eyes are brimming with tears. End quote. The reason why women are targeted with sexual suppression and repression brainwash, a lot more so than men, is in order to be able to manipulate and enslave men. I've discussed this in details in my article series on Understanding Women. Here's a quote from the fourth part. Quote, Professor Baumeister also mentions the following. I have not exhausted all the ways that culture exploits men. Certainly there are others. The male sex drive can be harnessed to motivate all sorts of behaviors and put to work in a kind of economic marketplace in which men give women other resources, love, money, commitment, in exchange for sex. This is essentially what I've also shown in the previous parts of this series. And I believe that this is the real purpose of all the manipulation that has been going on. All of this is to exploit men and motivate them to work. We're really modern slaves being used by those who are in control. One of their attack vectors has been our women. I've written about this in more detail in the third part of this series, and in the second part, we've seen how our sexual energy is being harnessed when I discussed the documentary, The Century of the Self, and Dr. Freud's theories. Remember how I discussed the movie, The Never-Ending Story, where the hero, Atreyu, had to go through so much unnecessary trouble, from his perspective, just to get laid in the end. They've made our women sick, in order to make it difficult for us to satisfy our sexual needs, which creates sexual tension. This build-up of energy then gets harnessed to motivate us to behave in a way that benefits those who are in control. We're being manipulated into becoming slaves, or batteries, like Morpheus explained to Neo in the movie The Matrix. End quote. Female sexual suppression and repression in society force men to work in order to, in the end, make use of a woman's vagina at certain given intervals, as Villa pointed out. Villa further explains, quote, Every method of manipulation is based on the carrot and stick principle whose applicability depends to a large extent on the ratio of physical strength possessed by trainer and trainee. When dealing with the young, the carrot is favored as a means of control. It has the advantage of maintaining children's trust in adults so that even at a later date, they will bring their problems to their parents. And so the process of manipulation is continued. This is much more effective than to start with the stick. If a captive dolphin has learned to do a trick well, its trainer throws at a fish. Because the dolphin wants to eat, it will do whatever is asked of it. Man, however, since he earns money is quite capable of providing his own food. It would be impossible to bribe him in this way. He would, in fact, be above bribery altogether were it not for one basic male need which has to be satisfied, the need for physical contact with a woman's body. This need is so strong, and its fulfillment gives man such intense pleasure, that one suspects that it may be the prime reason for his voluntary enslavement to woman. His longing for subjection may even be a facet of his sexual makeup. End quote. Even when it comes to the reasons for why men are bribed with their sexuality, Villa hits the nail on its head. Quote. No matter what a man's job may be, bookkeeper, doctor, bus driver, or managing director, every moment of his life will be spent as a cog in a huge and pitiless system. A system designed to exploit him to the utmost, to his dying day. It may be interesting to add up figures and make them tally, but surely not year in, year out. How exciting it must be to drive a bus through a busy town. But always the same route, 
at the same time, in the same town, day after day, year after year. What a magnificent feeling of power to know that countless workers obey one's command. But how would one feel if one suddenly realized one was their prisoner and not their master? We have long ceased to play the games of childhood. As children, we became bored quickly and changed from one game to another. A man is like a child who is condemned to play the same game for the rest of his life. No, one can hardly assume men do all this for pleasure and without feeling a desire for change. They do it because they have been manipulated into doing it. Their whole life is nothing but a series of conditioned reflexes, a series of animal acts. A man who is no longer able to perform these acts, whose earning capacity is lessened, is considered a failure. Without really giving the matter any thought, we consider the male sex as a kind of Sisyphus. He has come into the world to learn, to work, and to father children. His sons, in their turn, will learn to work and produce children, and so it will continue forever. It has become almost impossible to think why else men should be here. If a young man gets married and starts a family and spends the rest of his life working at a soul-destroying job, he is held up as an example of virtue and responsibility. The other type of man, living only for himself, working only for himself, doing first one thing and then another, simply because he enjoys it, and because he has to keep only himself, sleeping where and when he wants, and facing woman when he meets her on equal terms and not as one of a million slaves, is rejected by society. The free, unshackled man has no place in its midst. How depressing it is to see men, year after year, betraying all that they were born to do. New worlds could be discovered, worlds one hardly dares even to dream of could be opened by the minds, strength, and intelligence of men. Yet man is only a tiny cog in a gigantic business machine, he himself being in effect exploited at every turn. When he drives others, he drives himself most of all. His orders are really orders from above, passed on by him. If the men at the top occasionally take time to praise him, it is not in order to make him happy, it is only to spur him on, to stimulate him to greater effort. For man, who was brought up to be proud and honorable, Every working day is merely an endless series of humiliations. He shows enthusiasm for products he finds useless, he laughs at jokes he finds tasteless, he expresses opinions which are not his own. Not for a moment is he allowed to forget that the merest oversight may mean demotion, that one slip of the tongue may spell the end of his career. Once a particular field of work has brought a man success and financial security, it is rare for him to test his abilities in another sphere, attempting to satisfy his curiosity. His supply of praise may be dangerously reduced. The risk of attempting to be the measure of his own success is too great for him to take. End quote. Indeed it's abundantly clear that men and women are being manipulated through their sexuality in order to turn men into slaves. Also note that Villa correctly observes that we have long ceased to play the games of childhood. As children, we became bored quickly and changed from one game to another. I had to smile when I read this, because this is exactly what I mentioned in my post on the cycle of life in regard to the feeling of lust, the fundamental and natural desire for new experiences. Our cycle of life is being hijacked in order to enslave us. Both men and women, can put an end to this manipulation in society as soon as they begin to understand exactly how it takes place. For example, the way I personally deal with this is described in my posts, why courtship and dating are a waste of time, and what I look for in women. I encourage especially men to read those two posts if you want to spare yourself a great deal of trouble in life. One of the things I mentioned in my post, what I look for in women, is the following. Quote, in the meantime, I try not to deprive myself of human needs. In desperate times the occasional visit to brothels and the use of escort services will have to do. Most women these days are basically prostitutes anyway, trading sex and intimacy for money, fame, favors, ownership of your body and soul, your wealth, resources and labor, in marriage and exclusive relationships, 
so I might as well go to those that don't pretend otherwise, instead of letting myself be abused. End quote. So you can probably imagine that I wasn't surprised to come across this exact same thing in Villa's book. Quote, By the age of 12 at the latest, most women have decided to become prostitutes. Or, to put it another way, they have planned a future for themselves which consists of choosing a man and letting him do all the work. In return for his support, they are prepared to let him make use of their vagina at certain given intervals. In general, it is axiomatic that a woman will be expensive in direct proportion to the attractiveness of her secondary sex characteristics. Hence, if one man meets another with an especially attractive wife, instead of being depressed he should consider how much money the woman is liable to be costing her husband. It would be more economical for a man to satisfy his sexual needs with a prostitute instead of rushing into marriage. Prostitute in the conventional sense Strictly speaking, most women belong in this group. It is ironic that men consider ordinary prostitutes so very contemptible they are among the few women who frankly admit that they make money by renting out a specific orifice of their bodies. Women, too, despise the common prostitute, but for a different reason, they despise her for her stupidity. A woman who sells her body so ineptly is shockingly stupid by female intelligence standards. They admire only such women as are able to exact an exorbitant price for their favors, for example those who marry Rothschilds, Aga Khans, or Rockefellers. They have impressed on men the concept that prostitution is a sordid profession to intimidate men who otherwise might one day be able to draw parallels. The basic principle of sex as a reward does not vary from woman to woman. They all offer themselves to a man, stress their charms and then, providing he has performed his tricks satisfactorily, reward him. And, since they never cease to keep him in a state of sexual excitement, he will demand the reward again and again. End quote. Of course it's not women who keep men in a constant state of sexual excitement, but it's all the sexual manipulation in society. On the one hand society forces everyone, especially women, to suppress their sexuality and create artificial scarcity, while on the other hand it simultaneously arouses men's sexual desires through sexually suggestive advertising, pornography, the way women dress, etc. This creates polarity or tension and motivates men to work, that is, it forces men to jump through the hoops society wants them to jump through in order to be able to satisfy their constantly stimulated sexual desires. As long as we continue to ignore the information discussed here, humankind in general, both men and women, will remain slaves to those who are in control. It's essential for everyone to understand exactly how we're being abused and to recognize the root cause of the problems we're dealing with today. Putting the blame solely on men or solely on women is doing exactly what our manipulators want us to do. They want men and women to stay divided, to keep fighting each other, thereby making communication between the sexes difficult so that we can easily be controlled, manipulated and enslaved. So we have to do the opposite. The only solution is for men and women to ignore all the artificial social constructs that have been forced on them for thousands of years and to get back in touch with their true nature. That's when we'll realize what true love really is. And when that happens, the eagle and the condor will finally fly together again in the same sky, wing to wing, and the world will come back into balance. Thank you for listening. This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know. Those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.